hazardous chemicals whenever we talk about the hazardous chemicals we also have to design special emergency plans because these hazardous chemicals have special route of exposure for example toxic chemicals can be inhaled by the worker in the form of aerosols or the chemical can cause skin irritation when it gets in contact with the skin it not only cause the irritation it can even burn the skin of the worker then sometimes chemicals are ingested during pipetting as uh, that's why mouth pipetting is totally prohibited uh, according to world health organization there can be needle prick uh, suppose the needle ha uh, is inserted into the chemical and it get prick into your finger so again it is very much dangerous ya aapki skin pe koi puncture wound hua hua hai jiski wajah se wo chemical aapki skin ke andar penetrate kar gaya hai so it is better to use bandages on the wounds or on the punctures whenever we are working in the labs so these are the route of exposure of hazardous chemical either through inhalation ingestion contact needle prick or the broken skin ab chemicals ko hum routinely lab mein use karte hain lekin always use the limited amount of chemicals for routine use bulk of chemicals must be stored in a separate room jahan pe special showers hone chahiye at the top of the roof special fire extinguishing alarms hone chahiye and these chemicals must be properly labeled and they should be arranged in an alphabetic order so we so that we can recognize them uh, immediately and if the shelf life or the chemical get expire then remove it from the uh, store where chemicals are put there are three types of chemicals toxic chemicals explosive chemicals and we also include compressed and liquefied gases under hazardous chemicals now toxic chemicals are dangerous because they can cause skin irritation and they can be inhaled in the form of aerosols so if we want to pipette out these chemicals always open the chemical in the bio safety cabinets so that there are less chances of inhalation of aerosols by the workers then the second type of ke uh, chemical is known as explosive chemicals there is a list of explosive chemicals i am giving you few examples of explosive chemicals one of them is azide azide is routinely used in the antibacterial solutions but they should not react with the metals like copper lead as they can lead to explosion then ether is routinely used in the labs but they have aged dry crystals that become uh, unstable and lead to potential explosion then perchloric acid is should not be dry on a wood or fabric as these materials can catch fire then picric acids or their crystals such as picrates they get explode by heat so there must be specific temperature of these chemicals where we are putting them some chemicals require room temperature and some chemicals require cool temperature otherwise uh, if they are heated uh, for example in summers then explosion can occur now if we are talking about the compressed gases keep in mind that in the lab or in the institution there should be a special card for the transfer of these cylinders containing the compressed gases from the store into the lab and they must be chained within the wall there must be special rooms for these compressed gas cylinders always keep these cylinders away from the heat because explosion can occur for example if there are, we are working with the open flames no compressed gas cylinder should be nearby it should be away from the radiators from the electrical appliances because these can uh, gases can easily catch fire and the most important thing is that compressed gases must not be incinerated for sterilization purposes